I hereby call to order this meeting of the Master Plan Implementation Committee on March 7, 2013, 6.30 in Conference Room B. Our first item of business is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, does anyone have any requested modifications or changes to our agenda? In that case, is there anyone that would like to make a motion to accept the agenda? <coughs> I will motion to accept the agenda. All right, is there a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. And all opposed. Then we have the minutes from February 21st. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Are there any requested changes or modifications to the minutes from February 21st? Is there a motion to approve? Can you vote on the minutes? We can't vote on anything, but we're going to anyway. Okay. So, <laughs> is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All against? Aye. Approved. And this brings us to our first item of discussion, which is the Transportation Committee. We have a meeting coming up on March 21st, which I believe is our next meeting. Um, now, I know that Erica wrote her uh, message to be emailed here. Uh, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to review that message. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't remember. Um, I think she did a great job with it. It summed up what I think we need to say. The problem is, is that we wanted to get this message out halfway through before this meeting, which was last Friday. So she completed her objectives in a timely fashion. I think she had it done Wednesday or Thursday. And then we started banding around a list. Um, I know that uh, you just have put some good comments in on that. But the simple fact remains that the list is incomplete. So what I'd like to, what I intended today to recommend mm -hmm. to our group is that we just send to the names we do have and just get the ball rolling. If it's an incomplete format, that's fine. This is a working group and it's supposed to be a couple of meetings with us to kind of, you know, get the ball rolling and then hopefully be something that they can kind of take up and run off on their own. Can I ask you a couple of just questions um, that I wanted to ask last meeting? Hey. Front door is locked. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can go. Um, do you intend to make this an official committee with an administrative code that you need to run through the mayor's office? We brought this. You know, we brought this to the attention of the mayor, and it was his recommendation that the way we start this off was with working groups. Okay. And we didn't really know what that meant, so we discussed it and decided that the interpretation was where we were going to have some meetings, invite people in, and just kind of have discussions about it. Okay. And the people we were inviting, we wanted to really uh, take it and go. Um, and we want to form a basis for the committee from here in the same way that we did for the Transportation Committee, which is to kind of set some guidelines and then push it up and, and see what kind of authorization we get from the top. Okay, so you don't know where it would be housed at this point? You're just trying to? No. Okay. Well, well we, we pushed up before and the response we got was start with a working group. Okay. So that's why okay. it works. I just want to, okay. So start. Do you have any recommendations? No, I just wanted some background. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't going to be starting something that didn't wasn't an official committee that didn't have an administrative code that wasn't yeah. housed either under the Board of Public Works or some other committee. I mean, naturally, to me, it seems like it should fall under the Board of Public Works or it should be housed in that department, possibly, but it could also be its own committee. I guess it depends on what happens in the working group. But I just was curious on where you were thinking think, it would end up being. So Yeah, I think that that's definitely a conversation that the working group itself is going to need okay. to have in the formation. And we'll still, as the Master Plan Implementation Committee, you know, be the formative process that pushes it to wherever it needs to go. Okay. Um, does it now? The thing is, is we have this meeting coming up on the 21st. We haven't invited any. It's starting. You know, that's two weeks away. Some of these people on these lists are, are prominent folks in the community with very busy schedules. Um, we may have passed the point of optimum uh, notification. So it's really a question. And I said at the beginning, we have a decision to make right off. Do we postpone? Do we just go with it and send to the people whose emails we do have? And I'll post a, a message to that effect and try and organize that in the next couple of days via email. What do you think? I would think two weeks is reasonable. I think it's enough time. This is going up by email? I'm sorry. Yes, that. This message that, that Erica wrote 
We'll be going out via email to what emails we have. Uh, and as far as, I mean, there's been some recommendations. Uh, Joe McCoy, um, uh, the police chief, um, uh, Paul Duda, um, Melissa Zawadzki, um, Wendy. <laughs> so, you know, that's what we have so far. It's well, not a lot. From the history is that um, Paul Duda sat on the on the public facilities subcommittee of the master plan, and he is the chair of the board of public works. So, if he's not interested, um, you know, he might be able to recommend somebody, but he should at least be somebody that's on your invite list because he was part of those initial discussions to be with. And his son Jason was also on the transportation committee, and yeah. this was one of his big. Um, Pushes yes during the planning process. So you should definitely so be there as well. If if um, I don't know if Jason needs to be there, but Paul should definitely be invited. It, that seems to make more sense given what Paul's role on the board of public works and dealing with um, public work issues. That seems to make sense. So it seems then that it is the consensus that we should stay with the 21st, and that we should issue this to what emails we have in the next day or two via email. Any dissension on this? Okay. Um, we've already decided it by vote that this was the method we were going to use, so I don't believe this requires another vote. It would require a vote only if we were changing up the plan. So we'll move forward to the next item on the agenda, uh, which I believe is the um, Energy Commission. Uh, now, as far as I know, the recruiting's underway. We, we talked about this last meeting. Uh, I don't think there's any required action items on our part except to just recommend to folks and anyone that might be watching the video to uh, continue trying to get the word out. And um, I'll put it on our new Facebook page too. Awesome. So mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Right, any other comments about the Energy Committee? Then we are back to our Chapter 4 Housing Review. And I believe we left off on item 15. And we're ready to begin our review on item 16. Let's get my book here. On page um, 40. 40. Just before I forget, the housing partnership met last night and um, they said that they'd be willing to send somebody from the partnership to one of your future meetings if you feel like you need to talk to somebody directly with the partnership about some of these items. So that's very good. That can help with a lot of the items that we have listed for that for that Alright. So let me just get a new list here for item number 15. 16, I mean. All right, number 16 was the review of the to determine whether current regulations were too restrictive. Um, I believe the history of this was that um, at the time we had a senior housing ordinance that had some loopholes in it and um, in terms of the incentives to build affordable housing and so the um, this committee was looking to see whether there were regulations that were too restrictive or loopholes in the ordinance that would um, make it hard to build affordable units. I still think, you know, hopefully I'm going to be doing a, zo a zoning uh, update within the next year or two. So again, this would be something that I would put on that list of things to look at as part of that RFP process for the zoning update. Okay, so at this point there's, um, what, planning stage? We're waiting for the zoning? <laughs> discussion stage yeah the zoning can uh, with the zoning update I'm essentially waiting for the folks at 15 Cottage Street to pull their building permits so that I can have some access to some city funds to enable to fund that so nice. they're supposed to pull their permits this month so it would probably take me several months to sort of get organized to put the request into council and all that stuff so I'd say within the next two to three years so I don't know years. whatever ranking you want to give that. So, in so like this is discussion stage at this yeah. point. I've been basically putting the bug in everybody's ear yeah. saying this is I'm going to be asking for this at some mm -hmm. point, but okay. I don't have any definitive until Cottage Street pulls their permits. All right, so. number 16 is discussion stage. 17, working with the Council on Aging to help educate elderly about housing resources. Um, you should probably talk to the partnership about that. I'm not sure. I know that the partnership was looking to do like an education campaign at some point about affordable housing and housing options and they had 
done some initial outreach to the Council of Aging to see whether they would be willing to hear a presentation from the partnership. Um, so you should you should check in with them on that one. 17 is Vet with Housing Partnership. Yep. 18, we have work with developers and property owners to create info housing in downtown areas. This is one of the key issues we've talked about uh, at some length before. Um, this is kind of like an ongoing thing. It's, you know, when properties come up for sale, planning department often gets um, requests for information or requests to have meetings with potential buyers, and we often talk about what they plan to do with the building. So this is just something that... Is there any event in recent history that you're aware of that qualifies as this? Uh, the, the, yeah, this 15 Cottage. 15 Cottage, yeah. Um, Before that, anything? Well, I mean, you can look at Eastworks, you can look at Mill 180, you can, okay. uh, you know, looking at Everett Street. All right, ongoing. With a lot of examples of it actually being done, so I want to say that not only that it's ongoing, I think that there's you know that there's some progress in here because when people look at this, I want to indicate that. But I guess we'll just keep it with ongoing. Mm -hmm. Item 19. Uh, the partnership tried to bring forth an inclusionary zoning ordinance, which did not pass. Um, but I would say that this is done because the multifamily ordinance was rewritten in um, 2009, I think, and it was rewritten to have a requirement for affordable housing. So there's two multifamily ordinances in the zoning. There's one that's without affordable housing. There's one with affordable housing. So I would say that to some extent this is this has been done, and you can check it out. Okay. And these are, let me just get this right. These ordinances are written where? <coughs> The zoning ordinance. Zoning. Okay. Complete. 20. Create rental support program that would help people with first, last, and security department. We sort of uh, talked about this, I think, already at the last meeting, but Chatham does this right now um, down the Cape, and the partnership is interested in exploring this, but there's no nothing formal <coughs> going on. But again, they, they're, they're talking about it and doing research on it right now. Okay. They've been tasked to do that over the next year. So this is something they're looking into. We'll say discussion stage. And there is, you're absolutely right, that does seem like it has overlap with some of the other yep. items that we've had. Yep. Item 21. Uh, live workspace. This is um, something that's come up a lot in the artist community that there are live workspaces in the mills that are not deeded affordable and they're actually quite expensive. They're as much as my mortgage, quite frankly. So um, so there's, uh, there's a need for live workspace, which is a very specifically designed type of unit, which has a fairly open floor plan, um, allows somebody to, to, to create sleeping space but doesn't have sort of defined walls. It's almost like a loft scenario kind of thing. Um, but to be deed restricted for artists so that there's a, a price limit on that. So this is something that's needed, but um, until we've got somebody who's willing to build them, it's a little bit hard, so. Um, I have a question <coughs> in that um, in Tulsa, they had an area, we call it the Red Brick District, and it was in serious disrepair and it was sort of similar to our mill situation. Lots and lots of brick buildings made for industrial and professional use. Now, I had no involvement with the zoning or town planning or any of it, but from the layman side, I worked with a lot of the artists who apparently the city had made a condition so that you could live work as an artist in those spaces during their development. So instead of it being a build a new building for that purpose, it was actually the thing that repositioned the building, re, re, you know, repurposed is the word I was looking for, and turned over the whole space. I mean, it's actually now where the stadium is, it's, it's huge, it's, it's, it's completely renovated. And I just wonder, because I've had some discussion and heard some discussion, that I wonder if, say, with the Ferry Street 
mill or... Were these mills owned by the community or were they owned by a private developer? I don't know. Yeah. But what I wonder is, would there be any possibility of the city doing anything so that it provided aid on both sides? Not only for the artists, obviously, who then um, get a live workspace, and ironically tend to be the ones that are the most willing to not only put in some sweat equity but live with you know drafty or you know broken window or something like that mm -hmm. in order to get that exchange so that they can do their so it would be relaxing minimum living requirements so that they could have some initial funds to go further and producing uh, I'm assuming that's what it is I can't speak I guess, to exactly what I guess what I would ask you to do then is to do the research then is to, to do the research on what happened in Tulsa Ask them do for like a not a case study, but you know, provide a, a fact sheet that could be given to the partnership for them to, to think about, and we can try to maybe come up with something, a solution. But it, it'd be helpful to have a. You think the partnership is the first step here? Clearly, uh, planning department and partnership, yeah, together. I mean, I go to ninety percent of the partnership meetings, so I'm usually there. So. That was, yeah, definitely the question I was wondering is if this really hasn't been discussed yet, here's a good idea, and if there's that one or more, what the first step is. Yeah, I mean, if so you can come up with you. some ideas or some ways to address that, looking at case studies or how, how other communities have addressed this, I know, you know, we've sort of bounced around the idea of an artist co-op situation, but again, you know, the, I just don't know how it would work. Would the city own the property? Does it a private developer? How do like how do the details yeah. work? And so well, I know these were private buildings, <clears throat> and I can speak mostly from my own experience, where I made um, a deal basically with a landlord on an otherwise unoccupiable space, mm -hmm. and went in and purely for sweat equity, the the uh, exchange being there was no rent. What the landlord got out of it was that once I left, the building was usable. Mm. Uh, what I did was my carpentry, my cleaning, my painting, and living with no running water for a long time, yeah. and having to you know do we a lot of work. We have to figure out how that works with building code and health code, and so there's you know it would be interesting to have a conversation with the health agent. Would this be even something she would even allow yeah. in the community to have to have somebody live in a space that doesn't have running water and doesn't meet the basic health codes for I admit I got flags going up left well I don't know if that's the like case for these buildings I'm speaking to the building I occupied in Tulsa right and I guess what I would maybe propose that if we can somehow take up the mantle on is that you, you we might the town might get something great out of it like let's just say one, one of the yeah exactly uh, space is getting some help so that rather than demolition or sure if you want to do some research and figure out a way to make it happen and try to explore all the issues we might run into the flags with the health department and the building department in terms of building codes and stuff and come to the partnership with a idea or a proposal or something to talk to at least start a discussion about it i mean they're always looking for creative ways and to address issues don't so if you come up with something that's completely great. solo there i mean putting something together to present to us, then maybe we can get more input from here to help present to, to them. I don't, you're not alone. Okay, great. Um, so I, really, I think what we've said there is that there's possibilities, but really no progress. So I'm marking that no progress on 21. There's been no progress, but if you can come up with some creative ideas of how to address it, yeah. willing to listen. And then Friday 22, members of the East Hampton Housing Partnership and other housing supporters can write letters to the editor of the local paper to discuss affordable housing issues. Yeah, this is something they're, they're going to be working on this year. This is a priority for them. This year is to, to um, once the housing production plan is complete, they're going to start doing an education campaign. So this is not going to be an education campaign. All right. Um, so this is discussion stage for them. For yeah. On or is it ongoing? ongoing is what I was going to say. Has it been done yet? <laughs> I mean, not done. It so it's not ongoing. Yeah, discussion okay. or maybe planning. I'm not sure. Why don't we go planning stage? Yeah. Planning stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Item 23. Adopt zoning ordinance that allows for accessory buildings on residential properties that could be used for residence or studios. Yeah, we don't have an accessory apartment ordinance. So that's essentially what it's addressing. Yeah, accessory apartments are allowing, usually framed in that it's a certain percentage of the, actually, do we have an, we have an accessory apartment? There's issues with our accessory apartment ordinance. I have to go back and re remember what the deal is. 
I think it's our square footage is kind of thrown off. So Can you define it for me. What is it? Okay, an accessory apartment is it's a when you're talking about zoning, you have a principal building, and then you have your accessory structures, your pool, your shed. Well, this is an accessory apartment. It's a, a livable space that's smaller than the principal building by either you define a square footage that you, is your cutoff, or you define it as a percentage of the principal building, but it allows somebody to have a separate entrance and exit, their own kitchen, their bathroom. Um, often they're called in-law apartments, um, okay, but yeah. it's not, you know, a lot of communities will regulate it so it's only to be used for family members but you know you often find that there are 20 somethings that want to live in their community but they can't afford a house or they can't afford to live in an apartment there so this is a way for them to be able to stay in their community um, it's for seniors also but um, you know it's for anybody who, who needs a, a, a livable space but can't really afford the rents so um, we have an ex we have a, I believe in a um, we haven't applied it since I've been here, so that's maybe why I'm not remembering it. But I believe the assistant planner and I have had some discussions about we've got issues with it that need to be that need to be looked at. So there is a zoning so, ordinance, but it's weird. Yeah, there's the square footage requirements are odd because it's based on a percentage, if I'm remembering correctly. So if somebody has like a 1,200 square foot house, they only can have like a 120 square foot accessory apartment or something like that, which is not very. Now this is this document's what five years old, six years old. So and, and they wanted to adopt that. Does that mean that what's in the ordinance? Let me get back to you. Let me get back to you on this. Okay. Okay. I have to do a little. I'll get back. Postpone. Item twenty three. I, I mean, where I was going with that is I I just wanted to see if what you were going to find out was something that was created in the last six years. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let me go back. I'll have to look at the zoning look to see when it was adopted and. Item 24, encourage mixed-use development in all business districts. That seems pretty uh, self-explanatory. That's ongoing, I would think, right? Uh, <coughs> some progress. What, I mean, what, what's come up with this mixed-use recently? This new thing that he's doing over here in uh, Cottage, right? Isn't that a mix? On Landry? Right? On Landry, sorry. Yeah, but he's allowed to do that anyway and has been. That, that, so that's not really new. Would this apply? I mean, I think this is more talking about things like the neighborhood business district. The, um, like we talked about Franklin Street. I don't know if you remember yeah, this from the Franklin bakery Street. And, yeah. all. and I know that it's actually come up. I've had a few people, probably with you as well, but discussing their desire to do like a, a kind of an in house bakery type thing. Yes. And I think. Well, I know that in the master plan, that was exactly the kind of thing that uh, was the intention, was sort of the old world village idea where you could walk to the end of your block and get a fresh loaf of bread from a neighbor who has a bakery. And so we thought that that was good for the town as well as good for business, but we needed to update the zoning to be encouraging to it. And I guess the second part, which I'd be more happy to take, is then if we do that, getting the word out. Because not only have I had people discussing it recently, but I know the old bakery in that space, they ended up removing the ovens yeah. and going through a lot of work to remove that function which a lot of people found desirable and would have loved to have had and would have opened a bakery. I know three, but the zoning wouldn't permit it. So it would be a big boon to the yeah. to the city as well. Uh, Mike, I'm wondering why this is in the housing chapter though, but nonetheless, just keep it ongoing. They're talking about it on, um, you know, trying to promote it more on Highway Business District, and I definitely see it as an obstacle. It seems like an odd to have it in the housing chapter. I don't know how it ended up there. Well, it sounds because like maybe having the, oh, housing in the business. How, yeah. yeah, maybe that's what. Yeah, yeah that's maybe it's more promoting the on Highway Business yeah, than maybe. Like having, again, I think having upstairs apartments with downstairs. Well, it's done with those like uh, like right. commons yeah, 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 apartments yeah. and businesses yep. underneath. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, I yeah. think maybe it was focused on the highway business. Yeah. So you yeah. should check with Jackie though, Jackie Bruce or Brera. Um, All right, she's on the partnership, so you could just check with partnership. So that with partnership. But Jackie would know the answer to that since she basically wrote this chapter. So mm -hmm. and uh, ongoing. Item 25, work with owners of existing downtown properties to encourage them to build up their properties by adding second floor, that should be a second floor, affordable rental units uh, above existing single-story retail and commercial space. 
think this was addressing some properties that were being looked at at the time, some visioning, um, Union Street shops specifically, if that was you know brought up to Union Street and the, the apartments were put on top of that single floor. Um, also on the um, Manchester Hardware, which is now one story, it used to be traditionally two-story building. We found some photographs recently that showed it as a two-story really? building. So that second story was taken down at some point. So yeah, so you know, trying to, three. it three. might have been even three actually, yeah. Well, um, does anyone know of any case where someone has been encouraged to uh, successfully build up? Well, it's hard because you need to make sure that the building itself can withstand a second floor added to it. So, and that's the question: it's, is it, you know, it's great to think of Union Street shops having a second floor on top for re for residential, but structurally, can the building handle a second floor? You know, I, I don't know. So, unless the property owner was willing to explore that, and he hasn't talked about that at this point, so I think this is one of those big picture things to sort of keep there like this would be great if but I don't know how you actually make it happen no progress <laughs> <laughs> but it's the kind of thing that if we do uh, you know talk about it on ECAT kind of thing that we could promote to business owners could just get the word out that we think this would be good. The onus is on you to start the ball right. Right. Could rolling. I, could I you know, ask you a question? Absolutely. You know, the thing on the Facebook page with the yes, Union, that was, was that, it. Was that Union Plaza? That or was, was that Union looking? Plaza. Okay, so that was, was Union Plaza. If you were looking down Cottage Street at the pond, it would have been right there, okay. right in the bike path. Because I was, you know, somebody else was saying it was looking the other direction. No, the that, path, they were incorrect. The I didn't yeah. want to have a little the one problem I see is where do you park all these cars it, the parking the design it was in the back actually the back. yeah okay. so the so that visualization was taking the shops bringing them up front all the parking was in the back if you go to the um, the full set of visualizations are on um, PDPC's smart growth toolbox and there's like a visualization section and there was like three or four visualizations for that property okay. that we did cool yeah Item 26, expand membership of the East Hampton Housing Partnership through recruitment of a developer and financier. They are currently down about three or four members right now, so they're looking for members. Um, they had somebody who worked at East Hampton Savings Bank who just left, and they did have a developer as well who just left. So they had sort of done it, but now the membership has changed again, so, so they're now re recruiting. Is ongoing. So if you know anybody who wants to sit on the housing partnership. Our, our own committee could, could use a hand or two. <laughs> so <laughs> have to get in line. Um, let's see, item 27. Secure funding for landlords to rehabilitate their properties in exchange for a deed restriction, possibly CPA funds? We, we sort of do this with um, CDBG funding. It has been done more in the past. We're not doing it currently now. Our rehab program is focusing on single family homes, but there is under CDBG to do um, owner occupied multifamily and um, landowner rehab projects. So they're probably trying to model the same program that's been used under the Community Development Block Grants to apply under CPA. So if you recall, they were very successful in getting CPA funds to do rehab projects outside the target area of the Block Grant Program in East Hampton. So it would be probably something similar to that. So it seems like this has been done. Um, and is going to continue. It hasn't to be. been done with CPA funds, but. Um, but it has been. What well, the thing is, it hasn't. It hasn't been done with a deed restriction, has it? It hasn't been done with this this funding source. I, I don't know. I have to go back and ask our community development program director if we've done it using block grant money. Um, this is a very specific item. Not the possibly CPN board says in exchange for deed restriction. Well, that's what happens when you do a rehab project with block grant. There's a required deed restriction. There's a, 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 okay. a loan that goes on the house. Okay. Um, and if they, the loan is forgiven after 15 years, but the deed restriction stays on the house while the loan is, is on progress on that house. So any rehab project that's using federal block grant funds mm -hmm. is deed restricted for 15 years. Okay. So that's... So it has been done just with different financing? Possibly, but I would want to confirm that with no. the block grant person. 
I'm going to vet block grant on item 27. Vet block grant. Okay. Item 28. Uh, the East Hampton Housing Partnership can develop a program about affordable housing for the East Hampton Public Access Cable Channel. We're talking about it. Again, it's with that public education. Mm -hmm. yes. Discussion mm -hmm. stage. Discussion stage. Okay. And finally, item 29. Create tax abatement strategy using deferred tax payments for elderly homeowners on fixed incomes. I don't know much about this. I think it needs research. I think they even noted that it needs research the partnership themselves. So, so well, do you want it to do research here and fill in the partnership or work with the partnership on doing research on this? Um, vet housing partnership. So we need to talk with them to see if it's something they want to do or we want to do or right. who wants to do it. Right. Um, and because it's taxes, is, is the, the partnership ultimately the group and why did you go to them or think they would be the ones to? Because I don't think you want to go to the tax collector and ask her. Okay. I, I, I think, you know, when you, in my opinion, okay. That's the great. staff is doing staff stuff on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and they're having people come in and pay taxes and do their daily business. And I think for something like this, if you want to do research and come up with a policy or a concept, you want to work with the volunteer boards that are dealing with policies, not dealing with the day-to-day -day okay. paying taxes. That's my opinion. All right, we have all 29 items now, and a lot of them are set to vet, uh, which means to look out for other um, sources to get further information. Jessica, you've been incredibly helpful to us. I want to thank you for your assistance in that. The next step in this, before we go to the next chapter, is to delegate out these different vetting responsibilities. You know, who wants to go to this committee? Who wants to go where and do what? Let me just see how we're doing for time here. 7.15. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of time left, but we don't have the full crew. Um, well, those who aren't here get more. I think <laughs> like you're reading my mind. Right? First off, um, the, way it works. the um, first 15 items I have listed, so here we go. So, well, we have stuff. We have a ton of stuff for the housing partnership. I, I mean, really, that I they think you need to have another. They do own this. I mean, that's what I was mm -hmm. came in with. Yeah. Know, that they are the group, and they are a very active group, and they've been extremely successful in the stuff that they've taken on. Um, so you need to meet with them. You can't do anything without meeting with them and checking in with them and getting their blessing and partnering with them on stuff. Now, in terms of, I'm, I'm not familiar with how they run. So you said one of them might be willing to come here, which would be fantastic. If we were to kind of look at the items that we pulled out here, which is, what, 99%, uh, it's probably 28 out of 29 in here, and kind of walk down through the items, would you say that's an appropriate approach, or would you rather that we sort of, as a group, highlight the ones we really want them to answer questions on and kind of prioritize in advance? Yeah, I mean, it seems like you have a, a lot of categories, so are there certain things that are, that are higher in your list, then maybe those are the things you approach. I mean, you got to think of it this way, that their volunteer board, your volunteer board, you can only do so much in a given time. They meet once a month. So, um, you know, they've been extremely successful. They got the money for Parson Street. They got the, um, they advocated for the Marty for money for 15 Cottage Street. They're getting two properties developed right now, Everett Street and East Street. Those are really their, their, their focus right now, is getting those properties developed four units on Everett Street, two units on East Street. So I don't know how much more they really want to take on as a committee that meets once a month and has two development projects sort of going on right now. Right. So I think you need to think about that in terms of their portfolio per se. Well, we have two so. main objectives. One is to, at the end of the day, come up with a list that kind of removes, that, that has all these codes, but without the ones that say vet or postpone, which is to say that we need them to at least comment on it so we can say, this is where we are. This is our state on these items. I think what you're going to want from them is, and this is this is how I envision this committee working, as a partnership for all of the other committees in town. So go to them and say, here's the things that 
are sort of on your charge based on our review. What do you want us to work on? Do you want us to do some research on live work artists and how that can work? Would that be helpful to you? Do you want us to do research on the tax abatement thing? Figure out from them what they think is a highest priority. And I think it's to put it on you to maybe do some research and help them come up with some information and then go back to them and say, this is what we found, does this work, how do you want to go from there, you know? I completely agree in terms of actually picking out which things we want to push as a committee. Yeah. But we have a preliminary objective that's before that. Our goal before we actually try and make any of these things happen, or pick which ones we and they as a group are going to decide we want to make happen, our goal is to just decide where are we? And a lot of the answers we came up on this list aren't answers. They're, well, we need to ask someone else where we are so that we can publish something that says. Sure, okay. Doesn't it make the most sense then to, to ask one of them? Yes, but the problem the more is if they, if they only meet once a month and we give them a list of <laughs> what do you think of these issues, they're going to do the same thing we're doing. Uh, and, you know, and I mean, it, this could be a very, just getting well, through you, this why one chapter. Why don't you ask, or I can ask somebody to come to a future meeting. Give me a meeting date and see. When do they meet? They meet the first Wednesday of every month. Yeah. At what time? 6.30. Evening. 6.30. Evening. So if we ask one of them to come to one of our meetings, we could fill them in on what's going on, and presumably they would be more able to. I think that's a great idea in general well, they for our next meeting. But I'm almost. No, I, I'm not for our next meeting. Next not meeting. For the just not. I completely agree. Um, but I almost wonder if maybe like I can take these answers that we have here, look through them, and find the ones that say vet uh, housing partnership, and maybe just send them an email and say, you know, these are the, these are the things that we've identified as needing additional information. Can you provide any like one or two sentence information on where you think these stand? So are are you looking to prioritize? I'm just trying to. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what your process is. So you're we trying want to like documents online, like Google Docs that are essentially these chapter lists with us saying this is where we are. And then Jason, who isn't here today, uh, is going to help with this whole public um, presentation concept where we're going to go and say, OK, everybody, this is sort of what we've identified as priorities. But first, these are this, you know, oh, let me put this in a different way. This is what we've evaluated. We currently are at, updated it since this was created after six years. And these are the things that we want to prioritize. So step one is where we are, and then step two is the priority. So you need them to vet things so that you can give them a code? Is that what? So, you know, it's just so we can know where they are. In a lot of cases, it's ask the housing partnership. That's all we know about it. I think a good thing about doing it that way is it gives them the opportunity to just do it via email. It doesn't require them to get together personally. They could just bounce around some emails and be no, like, well, what do you think about that? that open meeting law. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> to, to say where they're at with this though? No, well, we they don't might need to have a discussion about where yeah, they're at. I, I don't mean, know they, if they, they would can, have a consensus We can it. send it to them and then they can talk about it at their meeting. I, I mean, that's totally fine. I, I'm not, I don't want to let them, they decide how they want to respond with the meeting law. So let me, just, let me just make sure I'm clear so that I can guide them. You want them to give them a code. You want all these things to have a code next to them, right? That's that the best possible option. Okay, so you want them to, to go through the things that say VET and to give it a, a, a code based on your thing. That's it. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Okay. And that accomplishes step one. Step two is we kind of need to decide which are the ones we want to prioritize. We want to involve them by having at least someone at the meeting, I think would be a great way, or maybe even showing up at the meeting, to come to an idea of which are the things that we're going to highlight and push that we think we can take action on. And then Jason's thing where he goes public with it all. Can I ask what's the difference between discussion stage and planning stage? Planning is and what? implementation stage? <laughs> <laughs> planning is there's been a decision to do something about it. And you're making a plan. Discussion is people are still talking about doing something about it. Okay, and then what's implementation? They're actually doing they're something. Doing yeah, they're physically implementing a plan. So talking about making a plan, making the plan, and implementing the plan. Okay. So how is that different from some progress? Some progress is a generic catch-all for when we just couldn't figure anything. It's the weakest item I've got there. Feel free to strike it. <laughs> okay. I just want because they're going to ask me these questions and I need yeah. to be able to answer that. I have okay. no problem if they want to hone that down to like four or five. That would be ideal. Okay, please do. Because I, I, I think from a public's perspective, if you're going to put this online yeah. and have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven categories. Mm -hmm. we, the, yeah. the reason these categories kind of came out was yeah. that we found need to fit them. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay. But we, I think it can be honed. It could be like, you know, 
Well, see, I mean, same, same progress. as same progress, or some progress is the same as partially. Well, partially implemented is almost like it died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they started doing it and it died. <laughs> Which is different from delayed? Well, delayed. <laughs> it may come alive again. It's not dead. It's just. Well, we could try to write out a further key. <laughs> okay. Guess, right? Yeah, I mean, make that a little. Really, for me, the one that I see that stands out is some progress. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, I, I think that they'll use the ones they want to use. That's all we need to say. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> all right. Sleepover, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If they don't like it, they won't use so it. So when they say, what's the difference between blah, 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 and say, I don't know, whatever you want. Whatever, whatever makes yeah. sense to you. I mean, if you actually put some thought to it, it, it does make sense. Um, all right. So I think in terms of figuring out which items we think are most important, we should wait till we have one of them here in the meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I would love to have one of them here in our meeting, not the next one on the 21st, but the one two weeks after that. Um, is that something you what, can what help? What is it? Uh, what's 14 days from the 21st? Is it like the 5th, maybe? The 11th? No. April 6th, maybe? Yeah. 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 4th? 4th, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's the 4th. That's the following, oh yeah, yeah. two weeks, 4th. Okay. So you want? 4th. Yeah, April 4th. Well, the day before is their meeting. The third. Maybe so you know, just third. go to their meeting? Well, that's what I'm, I don't know. Is there a volunteer here to represent us at that meeting? Do you want them to come here so that everybody hears it? Would that be better? I think it would. I okay. almost think both are best, honestly, because if only one of them comes here, we're not getting the full view of the committee and we should have someone here, you know, communicate with them and have that discussion represented as well as have one of them here to hear what we're talking about and bring that back. It establishes a, a better conduit. I can ask if a couple members can show up um, and I think I can. I, I, I think I can get more than one person from the housing partnership as long as I'm not forcing a quorum. I think it should be fine. But that would be fantastic. Um, you know, and if for whatever reason we can't, I guess we'll work it out. So, so there's no one here that wants to attend their meeting? I would, but I'm not going to be around that day. I'm off as well. I'm not I sure if you, I don't I know, know if it'd be worth it to you because they're, I mean, they've already, you were already there when they went through the list <coughs> of the house, of this chapter. And I have, you know, the same notes, my written notes are what they basically said. So they're talking about other business. So I don't know if it'd be worth it to you to be there okay. on the, on the third. That, so I'll see for who I can get to come to your meeting on the 4th. That means that what's going to happen is we're going to start prioritizing. That they'll have their discussion. Hopefully, I'll send out an email with, with these things. That will be my responsibility to put these things together to send it to them. Jess, I'll probably send it to you and Why ask you Why don't you send forward. it to me? Yeah, and ask you uh, um, the, uh, the only thing on the agenda, I think, for the 3rd so far is we're going to try to get the new executive director from Habitat to come to their meeting. So maybe if I can get them to review your list at the meeting, and then the next night, have a couple of reps come to your meeting and go through everything so that you understand why they rank things the way that they did. Fantastic. Okay. Does that make sense? That means that we that will work. be talking about that and, and maybe picking the key items at the meeting after next. Next is dedicated to being a working group for transportation. And after that, we'll start up on the next chapter. What's your next chapter you do? That's the next one in line here, which is... Let me just uh, let you know development. that we're in the process of um, moving forward with an update of our open space plan. So you might want to hold off on doing any open space recreation, maybe even historical and cultural, until after that plan is done. Okay. Which will be July-ish. But at least open space and rec, you should hold off until those plans are updated. Those are later, I think, anyway. I think yeah. the next one in the book is... Economic, economic and middle. Okay. Yeah. So you're going in order? Is housing the first chapter? No. Yep. Is housing the first chapter? Right? Yeah, I think we are going in yeah. order. Yeah. That, that was the gist of it, just walk oh. through the book. Okay. Economic development's a very needy chapter, so. Enjoy. <laughs> A lot of stuff in there. We do what we need to. That means that we're effectively done. Um, let me just check here. The next thing was the next chapter review. Are there any reports from the things we talked about in the past? We or actually do have a, a report on the um, uh, the school teacher that I've been yeah. discussing with. Actually, is really interested in um, developing. Uh, this was for history, East Hampton history in the classroom. And so I had said, well, here's some ideas we floated. 
and she came back with a desire to get students to record the oral histories of senior citizens. A, to kind of get the, the, the um, disparate generations together, but also she thought that the students hearing from those people their oral, oral histories would bring the history alive and all of that. So um, she's asked for any possible assistance, so I'm going to be looking for how to coordinate to get them together. I didn't know if um, I'm waiting to hear back from her whether the school has the media equipment or whether I should try to get ECAT to maybe facilitate, but it sounds like maybe the, the students will be organizing to go to the senior center and record oral histories. And then presumably those would be part of a permanent database. They're going to record them. They're going to record them. Okay. And maybe they'll live in the library forever forward. Um, and the other was to get the school kids into the historic society building. And so uh, I didn't know. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's always that's a challenge, it seems like. So um, so I'm, I'm interested in how we can. Does anyone help know the Historic Society? Anyone that I think you can just call over there. They're I'll only open over very there. limited hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so I'll help facilitate, but I think they, they open up at the end of You would know. You're the it's, guy to it's know. It's like two to four, four on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Historical Commission. Are you really? Any, any contact with us? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, they, they kind of booted uh, Roma and, and Bob Schwab off that. Oh, really? Board. Uh, yeah. They have a board over there? I guess so. Uh, huh. They used to. Not anymore, I guess. When was I, 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 I really don't know that them. much about the whole thing, you know? Right. But you're the chair. No, he's, he's the chair. Commission. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> different. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> So, so I guess that that speaks to an obvious that, issue. That other woman that was here, I don't know her name. Yeah, she had a her aunt. Erica. No, the other Allison. One. Allison. Allison. Her aunt is runs the historical society, I believe. Ah, oh, there's your cue right there. Shoot Allison an email. That's what she said one time. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. She did right. Yeah. Good. Good. There's a right. Good call. <laughs> Good dodge. <laughs> um, all right, so let us know how that goes, and uh, that's exciting news. Any other reports? Any announcements anyone needs to make? Our next meeting time is going to be March 21st. I am going to send an email out that says invite anyone we have e uh, emails for. Where are you that's holding the transportation right. meeting? Right here. In this. Well, it's, I, I have to let Barbara and or you chastise me as to picking the wrong room because I just pick B and then... You know the calendar's online, right? I think I think you can access the city room calendar on, off the website. I'll verify. I have a link. I have a Google link to it, but I think you can get it off the website. I'll check. All right. I, my, I mean, my tactic so far has been pick pick a number and wait and wait for the backlash. Yeah. <laughs> They'll just fix it. There's a, yeah, there's, a <laughs> cal there's a calendar somewhere that's got so. the room reservations for every mm -hmm. room, conference room. I don't know if it's publicly accessible or not, but... Alright, so it's either going to be B or A, and uh, that's it. I uh, am looking to see if there is a motion for our favorite task. I move for you, Chair. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alright, thank, thank you very much. much.